Hi, welcome to the drill today. Um, this is uh, a little drill bit we're doing. Um, given that today we found out that uh, the famous uh, chef and traveler Anthony Bourdain had taken his own life. This coming, Tommy, just a few days after Kate Spade uh, also took her life. And um, we have been talking about sometime in the future doing a show about mental health as it relates in sports. Because in sports, many times th the feeling is that you can do anything if you have the will, if you have the discipline, if you have the drive. And both these individuals come from kind of glamorous yep. kind of areas where people would be very surprised to find out that people have problems. And many times when people take their own lives, people look for reasons like financial problems, personal problems. People have said that Kate Spade was going through a divorce. And in a way, I find that disturbing because I think what people are saying then is that people uh, get driven to suicide because they're in a bad mood, because they're having a bad day. You would never say that about someone who had cancer or someone who had heart disease. You wouldn't say, well, you wouldn't have heart disease if you, you know, were a little more disciplined, you know. Um, and so we're going to talk about this in the future, but, but since I think a lot of people are talking about this now, and, and given that uh, the stats are out now that suicides in the last 20 years have gone up 30% in this country, yep. we kind of just want to talk about it for a second and maybe give you some information, phone numbers, things like that. Well, just give you a, a, a reason to think that it doesn't escape the world of sports either. Um, it doesn't escape the world of sports writers, sports athletes. We've, I mean, we've all gone through our you know, ups and downs, but some of us, including me, have had uh, clinical depression that we deal with. We deal with it with medication and, and counseling, but we also do it uh, knowing that uh, sometimes things can get away from us. The cloud kind of hangs over us, and uh, we just have kind of a hopeless feeling and try to get through it, and we really need support. We need people to ask us, are you feeling okay? Uh, how can I help you? Uh, and even come out and straight say, hey, are you thinking of harming yourself? Right. Because you sort of need to get that idea past you and uh, and get to a better place where you can sort of figure things out. Um, just from a personal standpoint, I thought this was good to talk about today because these, these high-profile events come up and it's easy to say, oh, what can we do? What haven't we been doing? And there's been great discussion on social media about this. Um, one of the things I did recently was uh, last month, May was the Mental Health Awareness Month. Yeah. Um, and there were some great sports stories that were involved with that, with some documentaries on HBO and uh, HBO Real Sports uh, with Showtime. And um, as I was researching some of these programs, which I was going to write about, I came across a tweet from Darren Ravel, the ESPN uh, business writer, who got involved with this uh, nonprofit called We Are All a Little uh, We Are All a Little Crazy. Dot org, mm. and the the Twitter account is called All a Little Crazy, and what it does is it was started by a, a guy who was an NBA agent, went through a, a big depression issue, um, came out of it wanting to help people with this, and now if you go to the website, you'll see testimonials from a lot of people in sports, um, and then also with Darren's help, people like me have been able to tell our stories as well and kind of be out there. Um, just long story short, there's going to be a tour of, of college campuses coming up soon where we're going to try to talk to athletes and, and students and sort of just give them, like, here's how to deal with things. Because one of the problems I think our generation has, and, and I, in, in a weird way, this is a strange day. I'm, I'm turning 57 today, mm -hmm. which should be sort of a happy day, but it's really kind of a cloudy day for me. And it's, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to just kind of grind through it. And this news doesn't happen or help very much. But as we, as we try to get through this, we, we understand that, Maybe our generation doesn't deal with it as well. Our parents' generation really didn't deal with it. They, right. uh, they dealt with it with alcohol or, you know, shutting it down, keeping it inside. We're trying to get it out more, have a discussion about it, because everyone sort of has uh, a degree of depression in one way or another. And right. It's how you sort of deal with it and, and pull out of it. Um, but, but talking about it, like, which I think was important to do today and, yeah. and was something that I think um, – is what we are all a little crazy is about just to kind of um, get the discussion started go for there for tips go there for uh, any sort of help and we have numbers that you can call but uh, Tommy, it, athletes have been in the news yeah. with this issue as well but i'm just curious how were how were you first diagnosed did did 
did you go to someone, or, or how did how did it happen well, when it was, you first got diagnosed? Yeah, it was, it's weird because I've always felt like I was had some sort of disconnect. When I was in high school, I felt like I had very high swings and low swings, right? which then was called manic depression, now mm-hmm. is called bipolar. Okay. Um, basically, I thought I was normal. I just didn't know how to handle life right. until I was married and then went to marriage counseling, and the, right. and the, the psychiatrist basically said, oh, no, we have to deal with you first. Okay. You, your issue is different. So as I did that individually i started um taking a small mill- milligrams of prozac which at that time was very controversial people were committing suicide because of this it was being blamed for it a lot so i thought right. very it was very anxious for me to even try this but i immediately felt healthy and balanced it was right. so what it what it, what prozac basically does is you have serotonin in your brain and it doesn't connect thoughts once you get this into your system your your my brain literally felt like it all connected at once. It was a very bizarre physical feeling. Yeah. But from then I could make sort of uh, better decisions about everything. Uh, it doesn't mean that it goes away. You need to to have counseling as well as medication. Um, but the situations we're seeing now, um, they're just so sad because you know that they can be prevented by just being kind to people, just being aware mm-hmm. of what a people are involved with. So. That's kind of my story. It's on the it's on the website, but um, well, I'm curious. Like like John and I have, have yeah. talked about this. We've been personally touched by suicide, and there's a tremendous amount of guilt after that. Oh, if I would have done this, if I would have called, right. if I would have said something. On the other hand, before the act happens, you're you're thinking, well, they need their space. Yeah. I, d- I don't want to no, come in a, on yeah, them, right? Or right. That kind of stuff. Yeah. So in your case, when you feel like this, what I- what do you do you want someone asking you? Do you want someone backing off? What what helps? You, you, everything just sort of shuts down. All sort of rational thinking sort of shuts down, and yeah. you and you just sort of try to exist, and you feel like you're walking through fog. And right. and those commercials you see for it, they try to sort of dramatize it, and, and you know that the person just like can't you know function, and that's kind of right. how it is. You need somebody to sort of snap you to like, hey, how you doing? And and sort of recognize the physical parts of it because mm-hmm. the mental parts you can't really tell. But you're right. It's, I would say just leave me alone. I'll be fine. But I know better that it's not. That's not really the best. What's best for everyone? Yeah, John. I'm curious for like younger people. Tom and I come from an age when we were probably in our our 20s. Still, it, th- there was still a, like a stigma. Very much. If you went and searched for health when it comes to mental health, if you went to go see a therapist or something like that, people would literally say, "Are you crazy?" or things like that. For you and Schmeeds, like your generation, how how is it viewed? Like, w- if you find out a friend is is going to a psychiatrist, psychologist, therapist. Um, <clears throat> at this point, it's almost uh, a little weirder to not be on some sure. sort of medication sure. or right. to be sure. see- seeing a psychiatrist or something like that. Right. Um, I know a lot of friends. Uh, who see see psychiatrists regularly i know mm-hmm. a lot of people who are on either anti-anxiety or anti-depression kind of medic medicine um i know for me personally with whatever uh ups and downs i've had i've never really uh felt necessary or anything like mm-hmm. that to, for me to seek some sort of medication um and i've had you know with my personal life had uh people where i didn't feel it was necessarily right for them to be on certain medications right. and it's just because i've seen it, the medicine kind of change the person at like a fundamental right. way when it it not necessarily yeah. for the good mm-hmm. right um That's true. but i don't think with you know at 30 uh i think i'm right at that sa- that area where it started to be way more accepting mm-hmm. um and i'd see there's definitely uh more more of a gender-based kind of differential where it's still at my you know my age group it's still a lot of well toughen up be a man right oh yeah kind of thing and like when um when kevin love came out and right yeah his panic attack stuff like that he talked the same thing saying i grew up you pow you power through this you be a man you don't let it get down and that's kind of where we need to expand i think and that, that is one area where sports can be so helpful. The, the talk has been so long that, that um, uh, it, it would be key the moment when there was a player of some um, note in either baseball, football, basketball to come out uh, as gay and be able to play and everyone be okay with him. And, and certainly that, that, that'll be a great day. Right. 
But this is certainly another area where athletes, because they are recognized as being tough and disciplined and having great attitudes and, and being goal-based and all these kinds of things, when they speak about this, I think it takes away a lot of what people kind of see as the um, shame of it. That, again, right. you, you just need to get over something yeah. like yeah. this. And the fact is, again, John and I were talking about our own experiences earlier, and I was saying to John, I remember about 30 years ago, the word autism would come up, and you'd go, oh, yeah, I've heard of What is that? And, you, oh, I've, oh, someone, well, now everybody in their life has someone close to them who is either autistic or who has an autistic son, daughter, cousin, nephew, or whatever. And unfortunately, I would have never thought this would have come into my life. And whenever I say it to someone, because I, I, I to be honest, I, I bear some shame because I think of all the things I could have done. Yeah. But then I talk to someone else about it, thinking they're going to maybe judge me, and they'll say, oh, I, I went through the same thing. It is an epidemic now um, that it, that is going on. and It can be masked so easy by athletic ability, by creativity. Success. Success. You can funnel this. You can channel, channel some of this sometimes into being wildly creative like a Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. And then that can be to your downfall as well. Right. So you sort of need the support and the people who are sort of just checking in on you that really makes a difference and um y- you know it, it's funny too because I, I will lose my train of thought because it's just it's just what happens sometimes i'm just not connected and, yeah yeah and uh, i'll i'll, I'll want to just kind of talk it through but um i was having one of those days yesterday i just felt like i needed to go out for a walk and there right. there was never any chance i was going to harm myself but you just don't trust yourself at a certain point. Mm-hmm. And you have to have your phone and keep checking in with people. Right. And it's just, uh, I, I, I wish people didn't have to go through this. I wish people didn't also think, well, all you have to do is take medication and you'll feel better. It's medication, especially self-medicating, medicating is going to get you more in trouble. You have to do it with a doctor's prescription, a doctor's uh, care, a uh, doctor's consultation, and talk through some things because one can't work without the other. Yeah. And that's another tough lesson I found out where, where you just over you sort of say, I'll just take more medication. Right. Then you, you, you reach these anxiety levels that are right. even more disastrous. So, um, And let's face it, I'm think, I wouldn't call myself suicidal, but I've gone through certain periods of my life when I've just thought it'd be a lot easier if I wasn't of course, here. Right. And, and we all I went through a divorce and things like that. And, and right. you just get very, it's tough. Life is very hard. What I think you and I have, and I hope a lot of people have, is, is a religious foundation and some faith and a belief that, you know, bottom line, maybe committing suicide would be a sin. I mm-hmm. mean, if you want to just look at it as a rule right. that keeps you from doing it. Okay. Committing suicide will harm your family because mm-hmm. they will be forever scarred by this. And you don't want to do that. You have too right. many loved ones that are. So there are a lot of reasons why you don't harm yourself yeah. eventually. Right. Um, but there are a lot of things that happen by accident that you've mm-hmm. got to just sort of keep yourself, you know, you know your surroundings, stay in the moment, be, be aware of what you're doing and, and how you're feeling and admit, hey, I'm having a lousy day. Right. I mean, when people ask, yeah, I'm not having a great day, but I'm, I'll be fine. I'll pull through it, but just kind of roll with me. Right. Just kind of roll with it. Yeah. So um, I, I hope through some of the stories in sports that it does become more of a discussion rather than a more of a, a stigma and people telling you, you know, toughen up and, you know, Tyron Lue going through his an- anxiety issues mm-hmm. too. And yeah. And I think with the uh, we're all a little crazy dot org program that the hashtag is same here. It's kind of like a Me Too movement right. where if you hear about somebody that's going through this, you go, yeah, me, same here. And you sort of you give them this sign now is with kind of the hang loose sign. So I want to kind of get that out there and, and just let people know that that's available. I think also that this is something we have to start paying attention to in our society because we, we tend to think that this is something each individual has to handle. Yeah, and the fact yeah. is, is we, we have to prioritize this in, in one of the things the government does. We, we think it's important that the government give money to cancer research and to AIDS research and all these kinds of things. Well, this has turned out to be a, 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 a public health uh, epidemic. And I yeah. can tell you, uh, a few years ago, I, w- uh, I have someone who was very close to me who was in a very bad way and thinking of harming themselves. And when I tried to get that person help, I could not find an agency. Yeah. And they yeah. kept saying, have they hurt themselves yet? Well, no. Well, then we can't do anything yeah. right now. Yeah. I, you know, do you, do you want to put them in a psychiatric hospital? Well, no, I don't want to put them in a psychiatric hospital. There was literally no place to, to put them um, or, or for them just to get some help. And, and frankly, 
I called around for like an entire day with this person laying on the ground sobbing. It was awful. Yeah. And again, it, it just showed me it, it, if this person had swallowed poison, yeah. there would be Much multiple easier, right? places right. to go to. So one of the things I did, I know the suicide hotline has been promoted a lot today, 1-800-273-TALK, T-A-L-K. But there's also a self-harm hotline, which I didn't know existed, mm. 877 455 0628 and there's also a depression hotline 888-640-5174 okay i mean you've got to sort of uh, compartmentalize all different aspects of this but right. they all lead to the same thing that you want somebody to reach out if they're in a bad place and again sometimes you just can't even pick up a phone you're just right. you're just so unplugged and, and in my situation something that's exacerbated this a bit is as we talked about one of the reasons why we started the show was because i've been laid off work yes and that is an experience I've never had before to deal with. And it, it's an identity crisis. It's a financial crisis. Yeah. It's it's an everyday sort of, I got to get up and do something or else I'm, not, I'm I'm doing nothing, right? If you're not making yourself better, you're making yourself worse. Right. And I, I've felt like in the last four months, uh, I've dealt with this in so many different ways. I've, I've, I've put on extra pounds. Mm -hmm. I've been, there's been days I just wanted to stay in bed and just right. kind of, you know, ride the day out. Um, it, it's, it's. The, the, but the the great part is when you're active on social media, you have friends that will notice on social media when you're either acting, putting out weird uh, vibes, or mm -hmm. you're putting, or you shut it down for a couple of days. They'll check on you. And go, hey, how are you doing? Right. I think that's an interesting part about social media is that people sort of know what we're all doing. Yeah. And when there's an aberration, they can sort of see that as a signal. I was talking with Jeff Proctor, who's kind of the creator of this show, and and he was mentioning about something like this that had happened in his life, and when it happened, he said he kind of had the reaction of, uh, oh, oh, yeah. It's like all yeah. of a sudden all these little signs become clear and all of a sudden you can see the road that led to what what yeah. happens. Yeah. Um, anyways, I, I'm hoping maybe we can put those numbers up and uh, we just wanted to do this. We're, we're probably going to come back in a few weeks and maybe get into this a little more depth, uh, but we, we thought it would um, would help right now. Since yeah, it's I a think great we'll discussion yeah. to have and it's a great thing to talk about. It's a great thing to sort of just get out there and, um, you know, Whatever you can do, just be aware. That's all yeah. it is. Just be aware. And don't be afraid to say, are you in a position to harm yourself? And just get that out of the way right away. Right. E even if you both have a laugh over it, that's better than exactly. not bringing it up a at all. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I think yeah. a lot of people are worried about hurting yeah. someone's feelings yeah, right. or something like right. that. Like, I, I'm assuming you're going to hurt. No, you're, yeah. you're not assuming. You're just, let's rule this out and let's have a good laugh over it if it's not true. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So. so, anyways. If there is any humor in it involved in it. And sometimes humor is a good way of coping. With I would me. think it would be a great way to, <laughs> yeah, it's to it's get around it. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Anyways, we want to do that. We, we want to drill down a little bit on this. Right? Yeah. We, we hope um, this might help a little bit. Um, if you need help, please go seek it. Just know you're not alone. There's a lot of people who understand, and there's a lot of people who just want to help and, and um, be kind. Thank be you well. very much. Be well.